Hello and welcome to Petrol and Paint. I'm Karen Gilmore and we're going to do a lovely little acrylic painting, um, hopefully, of St. Ives Harbour. So I was down there just the other day and um, took a nice reference photograph and I'm going to be working from that here in my studio. I've pre um, primed this board with some cadmium red acrylic and this if I can show you under here is the reference photograph I'm going to be using okay so it's got a bit of interference from this screen but that's what we're going to be working on I'm going to pop that over here to one side and as usual apologies if any dogs bark I've only got three of them up here in the studio with me today so um, hopefully they're gonna be pretty well behaved so I'm gonna go straight into painting this I'm not actually gonna pre-draw anything up so we shall see how it goes right so I've got some paint already out on my can on my um, stay wet palette and I'm just going to give that a little bit of a squirt of water just to freshen it up a bit so stay wet palettes are worth their weight in gold it saves you so much money on wasted paint because they work by osmosis so um, this is kind of what they look at like and they've got a um, a sheet underneath like blotting paper and then a, another sheet on top like tracing paper and then you put the paint on and when you're not using it you put this little um, top on it and it just stops um, the moisture escaping so the osmosis factor keeps your paint um, going for longer which can't be bad okay so let's have a little look what we're going to do what we're going to do first um, I think I'm going to don't move that too much I'm going to pop in shall we put some of the darker we'll put in some of the darker colours first we'll do it properly as we should um, rather than randomly like I do um, okay let's key in a little bit of the dark areas so I'm going to use I've got a couple of little flat brushes um, like this and first of all I'm going to work with let's start with a bigger one and I'm going to mix up um, a little bit of purple with some phthalo blue and a bit of burnt sienna and a little tad of Mars no it's not Mars black actually I think that's um Payne's grey okay so we're going to key these uh, few features in so I'm going to keep my reference photo here in my hand and we're going to we can have more let's have a little look we can have more sky or we can have more sand that's what I want to decide I think we're gonna put the it's up about here so this at the moment all I'm doing is just putting in some darker background colour here and it doesn't matter how rough this goes down um, this is to give me an idea of what's going where hopefully now the weather's improving we'll be out doing some plein air soon because um, I did try to make a vague attempt the other day on my motorbike but um, it's just a bit too cold to sit still for bloody 
normally paint really quick but it's just a little bit too cold still to sit out there and um, you know it wasn't really very successful oops I don't know where our pier is going there anyway it's going I'm gonna have this coming quite along quite a bit so this is just my initial rough out of where we're going like I said there's no drawing key lines on this I'm just literally painting straight so that's where our pier is going to kind of finish and then we've got the background over there which yeah, I can just put a little bit of lighter colour onto that it's a bit more purple there we go so for over here in the distance I'm just going to have a bit of that there for the headland and that's over that way it's Carbis Bay coming down there it's very distant okay and then just a little bit of Port Minster Point sticking out there can't see that at all from what I'm like I'm scraping paint off rather than putting it on but this is just the key line so this is a mounted board already into a frame so try not to be too messy um, and I've got less to do after afterwards with less sorting out to do anyway just make that not look too smooth up there a few trees in the distance there we go and that's enough just to highlight the fact that that's some distant headland then I'm going to get a slightly smaller flat brush and just put a few features on that pier while it's still uh, while it's still wet. So we've got the lighthouse, Smeaton's lighthouse is about there. This is just for my reference. Partway along here, that's more than halfway along. About here, we've got the old lighthouse which was actually is further along than that it's about there near the top of it and then we've got the locker things along there I actually don't know what they're officially called but whatever they are it's a bit more of that darker colour there okay. so we go to there the old lighthouse actually stands quite a bit prouder than it looks like it does okay so the sky afterwards is going to get painted down into this just to sort of soften it so it's not too harsh because acrylic does have the habit of being a bit brutal as a paint so um who have we got in the studio with us today so today in the studio we have Lulu, my uh, oldie girl, black and white. Well, actually, she's a tricolour border collie. She's up here. I've got Millie, my black and white Springer Spaniel. She's lovely, very easygoing girl. And I've got Boney, who's a new addition to our family. And Boney is a French bulldog who's come from... All of my dogs are rescued, but he's come from the National Animal Welfare Trust in Hale. And he's been rehomed once, came back in again, a little bit grumpy. So he's come to live with me. Um, we've also got a little bulldog pup in the house as well, just to make my life even more interesting. All right, I'm just going to put a few bits up there just to slightly soften that. There we go, so that's the basis of our outline for what we're doing. That's the pier, there's the pier. A bit more colour dark into that. There we are. So along here we've got a water line. I'm going to sketch that in rough. So I'm sketching with my paint. Here we go. And then I'm just going to key in where I'm going to put the water. Yeah, there's a little bit of a breaking wave there, and that's a bit dark. 
um, here we go. This is the way that I paint plein air. It's like sketchy, sketchy painty stuff. And then I'm going to have that wave coming down here because that's quite a nice point of interest. And that's breaking there. It's only little. The harbour being a harbour. Um, obviously the waves, hopefully the waves are gentler because it's a harbour and it's doing its harbour job. Right, so that's the line that we're taking there. So that's nice. And then we've got some wet sand which goes across here like that. There we go, just like that, and there. Okay, so that's our kind of first stage. Um, what are you going to put in now then, Karen? Well, I think I will put in a. What should I put in now? Let's have a little look. Let's have a little look. Let's start with the sky and we'll bring it down into the painting. So, we're going to use a different brush. I'm going to use a bigger brown brush. Um, and as this is acrylic, I'm not really fussed too much at the moment about the quality. So just a random size 10 hog hair brush. And we're going to... Bring a little bit of sunshine into one of our eyes. So we're going to use some cerulean blue with a wee touch of white for the very top because this is where our darkest bit is. So up here, this is going to be our Disney sky because this is the darkest bit. Now I'm mixing this on the palette and um, I'm going to do it quite quickly because I want this to look quite fresh, um, which is what I think the, the joy of plein air is, keeping it fresh. That's what makes it look nice. Okay, so add a little bit more depth of colour up there. So this is almost the colour raw. Now I'm putting that up there because that always is stronger on the very top. Then I'm going to take my mixture with a bit of white. Now the white I'm using for this is zinc mixing white because I don't want it to be too layerly bright. And this is going to go all the way along here now, like that, up to there. And then I'm going to bring that colour into it. There we go. Um, I want these strokes to be quite, quite fluid, so not too sort of too contrived and too samey. I want you to see the paint strokes on the brush. Okay, so then I'm going to add more white and I'm going to slowly bring this colour down in tone because um, we do have clouds up here, but in amongst the clouds I've still got some, some blue. So I'm going to put some of that in there now. And as it goes down a little bit more, almost in my eyes, it's like a little wee touch of like lavender in there. So let's get this through here a minute. Okay, it's nice. nice strokes. And there's no clouds at the very end. So the tones on the very end are just going to be the colour itself, it's getting lighter and lighter. And you can see the red coming through, I don't mind that. Um, in fact, I quite like that. Okay, so a bit more white into my mix. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here, I just don't want that to be too hard. What I'm going to do here is mix a beautiful little bit of this lavender into the mix because I see that colour there. It's just a little bit of blue with a tad of purple in it. So 
so we'll keep them to the same blue throughout the lighthouse key line there Top of Smeaton's Pier, the end bit, is almost the same height as Hale there in a very distance, going up to the lamp, bringing that sky down into the hill. So there, bring that down, okay, bring that down into Calvis Bay. So I painted this on purpose slightly higher to bring this down into it. There we are. That's quite nice because it keeps that lovely and soft. As I go down into that bit, I hope I haven't stuck my head under the camera again. Um, my straights will just get a little bit smaller and a bit, a bit more mindful, as you can say. So this is dry down here, so it's fine for me to put my hand down there. So I'm going to bring that just down a little bit more, have a little bit of contrast on the edge of the pier. There we go. So um, I'm also going to bring this colour right through the top of the key. Down here. So this will also soften up this line of the key. Now, my eyes are rubbish and I can't really see straight lines very well. So let's just wing it and hope it looks straight-ish. I have a little bit of a defect in one of my eyes and it doesn't see um, it doesn't see sort of like circles it sees things that's like ovals and I think it makes an impact when I see straight lines and squares as well because I always have a bit of a dilemma about whether things are square or not but hey ho, we have these things and we get used to them. Maybe it'll make my painting style unique. Everything's a bit wonky. So that's the top of the lighthouse. That's the top of the like, containers there. Storage next to the lighthouse. There we go. That comes down a little bit, there's only a little dip in it, and then we're more or less straight to the end. Extra little bits, because I don't want this to be a really hard line, I will put up obviously the lights and bits and pieces like that. And some little things interrupting that line to break it up a little bit later. That's quite funny, the pier, the lighthouse looks a bit random in the end. In fact now I'm there I'm going to just paint over it because it's going to be a different colour. It just makes me see the picture as a whole so I'm not fussed about painting over that. It's not going to be that colour when I finished it anyway so it makes no difference really. Right so because I want that to continue at least part way up here let's do this bit so we've got a little angled roof there on the key house across to there and then we've got the flats behind stick up like that there right so key house roof goes down there okay that comes down to there down there And there's a little gap between there. Quite a little, really. Let's bring those down a bit smaller. There we go. 
So this is just, let's keep a bit of a theme going through it. Now I'm going to work straight into this and lighten this up a bit because, like I said, I'm using zinc mixing white rather than titanium because I don't want it to be too hard and too harsh. But I just want to put a little bit of lightness down, a little bit lower there. Just bring bits of it down. There we go. Oh, sorry, it's my phone making random noises at me. Okay. Can't turn the noise thing off really, but get used to it, I suppose. Life without phones, what will that be like now? Okay. So I'm just bringing some of these clouds through here while this is still wet. I love painting wet and wet. It's um downside of acrylic is the speed it dries is obviously like breakneck speed. So you do have to you do have to work it. But um just bring it a bit over there while it's still. It's more defined white there. It goes up there like that. Put some of that in there, lovely. A bit of that there. And again, like going into the um, background over there, my marks will get a little bit smaller as I come down onto the buildings and the, the kind of almost the horizon behind the pier. Because if you look at the sky at any stage, the further away the clouds are, the smaller they are. So I think doing that with the brush marks um really helps consider be considerate of your marks make them purposeful and then there's a couple of little dirty clouds over there There we go, that breaks that up a little bit there. Okay, and then we just need to work this bit up here. So again, straight into here, I'm going to mix. So what is nice, and I am quite a dirty painter, I must say, um, my colours mix into each other. I quite like it. I don't want them to be clinically, oh, this is this colour, that's that colour. If my white picks up some blue, so be it. This white is not white white I can see blue through it so it's fine it's very rare you see proper pure white which is why I'm using the zinc white in um, in the landscape most pure white white things come from man-made stuff which is why sort of buildings I think that are painted look so dramatic um, when the sun's shining on them because those are you know those are the things that kind of stand out because they're they're not in nature really they're sort of uh, painted with your brilliant white masonry paint um, so most most whites are slightly muted if you want them to look natural that is I'm not saying you have to do that at all you can do whatever you want Okay, so again, coming down into the rooftops and stuff, we're just being a bit mindful of the size of the marks we're making here onto the uh, onto the canvas. There we go. 
So once this is dry a little bit, I will go and put a little bit um, more white onto the top of it, but I just need that to dry off a little bit. So because I don't want that looking like ridiculously Disney, I am going to um, slightly lighten some of it a little bit, I think, now looking at it. Um, you can choose whatever sort of blues you want to to use. Um, I think cobalt blue is a beautiful blue, but I think it just gets a bit overused. So um, I'm using the cerulean here, but I really like the French ultramarine as well as a, as a sky blue. It's It's got a lovely colour to it when you tone it down. A little bit so I'm going to leave that for now for my sky and I'm going to work the same color through whilst we're doing it into the ocean underneath so obviously ocean reflects the sky blah de blah de blah I'm not putting any boats in yet all the little dirty things I'll put through at the end because I don't want to interrupt the um, the kind of flow of it and I certainly don't want to sacrifice like a nice um, brush line to stop and paint around little things little things like hooks um, because that can all go in afterwards that's fine so end of the pier um, headland in the distance it's further away so I'm going to just take, wipe a bit of paint off of that and keep working it up there. The Port Mince Point is slightly further down, so that'll do for that. I'm not going to overdo it. I'm going to use my colours that I'm using up for the sky, like I said, and work it down because it's reflecting itself. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of stronger mix of the colour the very top very very top up there because that's where you get that to you can hear some of my dogs barking in the house so they may all kick off out here in a minute just to pre-warn you okay now I'm gonna mix a little bit of fallow green because as the water is coming further forward, we're going to pick up some colour of the sand, which being sand colour, um, when you mix sand colour with blue, you get more greens. So we're going to have a really nice sweep across here of this. Um, water coming in and uh, like I said I want to get a nice line on that because that's quite nice there okay and get the colour in um, and get that line as uh, as nice as possible it's actually quite light the water there because you've got the clouds as well so we mix a little bit of white into it because obviously what's up there is shining down on the water and we have got quite a bit of cloud up there so we will have quite light um, tones here in the in the water so just at the front here we're gonna have some stronger color because there's going to be a gig well there is a gig there's a gig which is a boat uh, there and that is uh, this is where the wave is breaking as well so you're getting a bit more definition in the water there and this comes across really nicely here so I'm going to have those two I'm going to have this coming across and this also creates a little bit of interest a little bit of something different in the water apologies if my head's under the the uh, camera again I keep doing that I forget I'm filming 
even when I'm not filming I talk to myself so that doesn't remind me of what I'm doing put a bit more blue into that over there oops lost me reference photo right now where's that gone there it is okay a bit more colour into that this um, painting will then be available from the Art House Gallery um, on Island Road in St Ives, Cornwall, um, where she has all of my, my lovely Joan and Janine have all of my paintings of St Ives. Um, so if anyone's like, oh, where can you get your paintings from? That's where you can get them from. So check it out on Facebook and Instagram, um, Art House Gallery St Ives. She has some really nice work in there. I'm just keeping an ear out on the dogs because um, my other half's coming home and they're all going to go wild and bark like crazy so I'll have to do a runner and open the studio door to let them out so they don't deafen you in the process of their enthusiasm should we say so I like that as initial colour and we've got some live music going on next door by the sounds of it <laughs> so uh it's copyright free I suppose a bit of electric guitaring um, okay we're all up for a bit of uh, nice music so I'm going to put a little bit of purple here now because you see this along the shoreline just where the the water breaks I'm going to just tone it with a little bit of that and that's going to, I'm going to carry that through into the water so it's not just there, it can also be there as well um, and a little bit along there, let's put a bit of that along there as well so some of the colours, I quite like to do this well, everyone can do it their own way but I'm just showing you how I do it okay then we're going to have a bit of burnt sienna. What are we going to use for here, Karen? Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, buff titanium. We're going to have those three. And this is going to be, yeah, this is going to be our colour of the wet sand. So the wet sand is there, there. So it, the wet sand on this reference has actually got th two parts to it. It's got this bit, which is where the tide has been, because the tide is retreating. Um, so this I literally took just the other day, because this was my little puppy's first day on the sand. So this is in the Harbour, Harbour Beach St Ives thinking oh Easter holidays have gone all the children have gone home it will be nice and quiet yeah right that wasn't the case it was so busy it was a beautiful day everyone enjoying it nice to see okay so on top of that where this where the um the water's just gone out I'm going to put a little bit of zinc white and we're going to go, hmm, I think that colour is more the dry sand actually, and I'm going to go with it and use it for the dry sand. So the dry sand is quite abrupt and harsh along the tide line, so the tide line literally just stops randomly and quite deliberately. No blending here, 
it goes from one colour directly to another. So let's get that in and uh, into place. And it's got little round bits where it's come. This is as high as the tide has come up onto the beach on its inward journey. I keep looking to make sure I'm not putting my head and making sure the camera's still going. The camera's got an awful habit of uh, cutting out on me. I'm not sure why I'm not very good at the video editing side, should we say. But um, anyway, should get better the more I do it, I presume. Hopefully. Right. So, have a bit. Let's just fill this in a minute. So this is just to get the colour down on the on the board. There you go. I don't want it to be too glaringly yellow. Okay, so that's the dry sand. This is the wet sand. And then we've got like um, a shine, should we say, off of this bit here where the water is still wetting as it's coming in. So let's get that going. So to make that look shiny, it needs to be lighter than the rest. It's quite an interesting sort of, it doesn't really have a definite colour, but there is a wee tadge of violet and purple in there. So I'm going to purple that, violet that up a little bit and have that tide line there. So now this is as far as the tide's coming in as it's on its retreat. And this is almost, it's very slick. Very slick and smooth. And there's no edges to this. It's just blended. Beautifully blended by nature. huge amount to do on that bit to be fair there's a little bit of colour here where this wave is breaking not quite as much colour as I'm putting on I'm exaggerating she can do that when you're paying you can make it whatever colour you want um, but I do try and keep relatively true so it does we do have some downward strokes on this bit where we've got a bit of reflection from the clouds up there that's puppy, that's puppy saying dad's home in the house making lulu say oh do you need me to come and sort it all out for you puppy one second going to put the rest of this sheen in here which is the reflection of the clouds on the wet sand and then there's a little bit of random colour in there as well 
So we can just do a little bit of too samey samey. And as it's drying a little bit, you can work a bit of colour and stuff into that. Okay, so we've got all the footsteps there, so it's not even an even surface. Okay. Just a little bit of shine into that because that's been wet but now it's drying off that bit of sand and then there's some seaweed around this edge bit but those sort of bits I'll put in afterwards there we go and there's also in the water here you get a little bit of these tones of the sand so I'm going to paint a little bit of that in there as well there we go because this is where it's right in against the shore and obviously it's going to pick up sand this here is a put my glasses on now this bit here is the wave that's breaking and as it's breaking it's picking up the sand as well so up that there I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in there so we've got a bit of colour in it now then we need to work on the pier and the buildings we should crack on and do while it's still yeah might need to wait for that to dry off a little bit so what i may do is pause that and then come back to it and see if we can do that and all the dogs are shouting at each other out there so good time to have a break methinks Okay, so we're back at it and um, the sand and stuff now is a little bit drier so I don't have to worry about where I'm putting my hands so much so um, this is the underpainting side sort of done. Um, what I'm going to do now is have a little look at the buildings, see if I need to put any colour on any of these backgrounds. Uh, might do a little bit. So let's have a little look this over here in the very distance is let me give you another look at the reference photo Ooh, let me try and do it without the light on it it's a bit awkward isn't it on the camera okay so we're going to address this bit over here in the background first so i'm going to put a very pale gray sort of background. Let's have a little look. What colour are we going to do over there? So obviously, well, I presume it's obviously. Bluer colours, cooler colours, make things look like they're going further away. So distant stuff. So we're going to put a wee touch of mauve blue pale white it's a very background over here towards hail okay so that's gonna just be tippy toey and i've got just a little cheapo brush it's just a little flat brush it's no specific make it's just um, a little brush um and then i'm gonna put a bit of gray into the mix and I'm just going to take the edge off of the red on this because I want it to be going into the background more and warmer colours, red, bring things further forward. Okay so that just makes the headland look like it's further away. I'm also going to take a little bit of red out of 
that colour by making a kind of similar colour tone but just to go over it a little bit so I'm using what I've just used but I'm just slightly darkening it up with um, a bit of blue so it just takes a little bit of the red out of the mixture I'm not getting rid of it completely because I actually quite like it that's why I've underpainted in that colour okay but it just gives a little bit of clarity there to distinguish one headland from another so it's the same same kind of colours but just a darker tone said a little bit of blue added to the mix now if my head goes in a little bit here I do apologize but sometimes I just have to get in a little bit closer to see what I'm doing even with glasses on these days picked up one of my dog's hairs on that brush this is actually quite watery at the moment so acrylics are funny old paint to use you really need to use it a lot to get used to it because it dries a couple of shades darker than what you put it on so it can give you a slightly false reading I'm going to slightly lighten that down with a bit of pale okay so hopefully you can see there there's a little bit of clarity now and a bit of definition in those back headlands just there so I've darkened that one lighten that one lighten that one even more so we're just taking the red out of it okay let's have a little look so we're going to have a look at the pier and the houses just having a look from up here from this vantage point it's quite interesting okay let's have a little look okay so the sort of tones that we've just used on um Portminster Point which is this bit we're going to then bring those into into the pier here as well so sorry I've got a border collie sticking their head into my painting excuse me sneezing as well right so let's do a little bit of pier work here so we're going to just bring that up a little bit and just give that a little bit more of a equal okay so now I can see what I need to do I need to bring that line of the pier down a little bit so I'm going to use some quite dark Payne's grey here now and just bring this down into the water there's three little arches there and I will do those near the end because you can just see the light going through those this is just to give a little bit of definition at the bottom of the pier okay and I want this to go the whole length across to there that should just make it look a little bit more even okay right so as we're doing that and I've got this little skinny brush out I'm going to do a little bit of the, um, I like calling it this, the furniture, <laughs> the pier furniture. Actually, rather than using this brush, I'm going to try ah, it is, and use this little skinny brush for it. So I'm using this blue mix from there just to put a few little bits and pieces up here like this. There's so some stuff. There's always things that are on the pier. I don't know what they are, all of them, but it's a few bits. We've got a few um, little light lamps. So we'll put those up and see where they go. And then there's, I don't know what that is. Something's along there. And someone will go, oh, that's the so-and-so. Yeah, I have no idea what it is, but <laughs> looks like a house it's not obviously um, and this this will now break this line this solid line up which uh, you know you don't really want on there do we? just 
just makes it a bit hard otherwise. Um, right, let's get the rest of these. There's a, a light in the middle of there. That's quite tall. So you get loads of cars and stuff parked along here. I always wonder why people do that on rough days. I don't think they know how bad salt water is for your vehicle, but you okay. go. This just gives a little bit of. There we are. Okay. And then coming up to the old lighthouse. So just down here. You can just redefine that a little bit. And that's got a little outy bit. That's got that on it. That's got that little bit. And that's got the bit that goes up. And then it's got these little storage things right uh, alongside of it for the fisherman's gear. And then you've got um, other gear that's alongside of the um, craney thing. We've got the lighthouse at the end and the lighthouse has actually got like a little bit of a dark side to it not in an evil way but shade and you've always got people lurking in there now so that's got all those rails on it Just to keep people on the pier rather than falling off. You could try some to fall off a pier, but hey hey. Okay, so we've got those little bits. Now the buildings here, again, we're gonna just work on and treat in exactly the same way. So we get, we've got like little bits at the tops of the roofs, blah, blah, blah. We just need that slightly thicker, it's a bit wishy-washy. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do some darker bits. Darker bits there for the roof line, and then for the key house there, it's a bit darker, chimneys, Chim chimney, there's a roof eave there, goes up, up there. Again, just need a bit of more strength in that, I think, just to make it a bit more. Um, So that just breaks that up a little bit. I'm going to put some darker bits down here now. I'm going to use a bigger brush for that so I don't faff as much as I normally faff, um, which is quite a lot. Faff less. That's what I say, faff less. Okay, leave that little brush there. You try not to fling it in your paint like I just did. So you can stick your hair in your paint. Okay, so make sure I wash that. I'm rubbish at not washing my brushes and ruining them. Okay, so let's get some dark into the buildings where we need it to make this bit of definition here. So these are all like the flats and properties on the harbour front where you can stay to get the views that you want. Um, let's have a little look. 
so I don't want to make it too definite hence I'm using a bigger brush because I want just to suggest what's there rather than fill it in I want people's imaginations to fill in the gaps so there's a few buildings that are quite evident in certain places and when you're from somewhere you know them so everyone knows the key house you know there's three cottages there and you've got the flats behind okay that's those three things the rest you can infill so as long as you put a few sort of uh, key pointers in you know the rest you can have a bit more artistic licensing with so this is the bottom of the harbour wall it's quite dark because it's got seaweed around it so I just want to make that a little bit cleaner there because that is quite a clean line It's got the seaweed that goes up the wall there. Right. Put it there. That's quite a strong bit of colour on the grand scale of it. Okay. Oops. I'm not going to have to make the whole wall a bit bigger now because I've just done that. Dropped it down. Okay. So anyway, there we go. It goes like that. Up there. When we were kids, we would go the whole length of this wall. Didn't matter if the tide was in or not, on the chains that used to hang down for the boats and just walk along there and try not to fall in the sea. Okay. I'm just going to add, I'm just going to work that out a little bit. I just want a bit more fluidity to it there because just along here where you've got that sea you've got also got it's going to reflect what's above it so you've got a bit of darkness of that coming down there into the tide line just a little bit and it finishes there and there's just a little bit there which I'm going to just bring down with my hands get your hands in it there you go oh my god there's a flying thing in here I hope it's a bee and not a wasp, otherwise I might just... Oh no, it's a big bumblebee. Oh, right, let me go and assist the bee to exit the studio by turning off the light. They're pretty good if you turn the lights off. Come on, Mills. Let's catch a bumblebee. Oh no, he's in a... He's got caught in a spider's web, of which I have many. I will help him. Nah, get off of him. Sorry. Well, I just... That spider was on it, mate. You're not having that for your tea. Bless him. And if you can see him. Oh, where is he? It's a proper big bumblebee. Dear of him. Or her. It's a bit webby fied. Sorry, an interlude to uh, escape the bee. That spider was so on it. He was there very quickly. Sorry, spider. I took your dinner away. It's flown away. Happy now. Someone's going without their supper. Right, so that's as much dark I need to put on there. I need to add a little bit of dark. Um... Where do I need to add a little bit of dark? Um, 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 um. Just down here. So again, I'll let you see the photograph. Mm -mm. So we're going to add this little bit of dark here now. Um, and just give a little bit of... Because we can always lighten it up. That's the great thing. You can always lighten it up. With acrylic, it's so forgiving. You can do whatever you want and change it. You just got to leave it for a little while and you know you can walk away come back um 
and continue and it lets you get away with it. So I'm just putting a little bit of uh, tone, dark tone into there. So, you know, we've got a little bit of stuff we can work with. Putting a little bit extra down there just to bring that forward. So on the tide line now, we've got some, you know, we've got some like seaweed and stuff and it always seems to be exactly where the um, where the water's just been um, lapping against the uh, against the uh, wet sand against the dry sand so we're going to put a few bits a few marks here to indicate little bits of stuff that the ocean has dragged up okay so put a few bits of that down there use the side of the brush different bits of the brush you don't always have to use the tips sometimes you get quite nice um, effects from using the sides of the brush as well okay a few marks we might do a few little i normally do this at the very end to be honest but just do a few little splatters there as well try not to be too mucky so i don't have to repaint the board around the back of this too much but just a little bit of a splatter i don't it on my bit there Oopsie, Karen, you're making a mess. Okay. Okay, so we've got our darkest bits on the buildings that we need on the buildings. Um, and now we're going to start toning them down and putting a little bit of the light colours in there as well. So obviously the sand's not bright orange there so we can tone that down and use some of the this color here for there i need my reference photograph okay so the sand is like up there like that and we know it goes up around the key house and comes down Okay, bring that line right to the water to tone that orange out. Now that I've got that in place, I'm going to add some white to it and I'm going to work it up there and just put it on that wee bit thicker. Just putting a few highlights on where I'm seeing them now. Okay, so we've got our dark bits on the building, so I want to do some like a brownie bits. So I'm going to mix some um, burnt sienna with some blue. And then I'm just going to do some little bits up here. It's still quite dark actually. I don't think I need it quite that dark. Let's mix a bit of that buff titanium with it. A little bit more burnt sienna. Maybe a bit of cad orange. Oh. We'll get there. Okay. So let's have a little look and see what we've got there that are like... Um, So I don't want this to look, like I said, too faffy. Too faffy. So this bit of this bit up here of the um, of the wharf, the walkway that you all go along. It's not blue. It's this colour. Oh, I can hear all the um, 
motorbikes out there. I should have gone on a motorbike ride out tonight really but I had to get some paintings done so work um, over road at the moment. Okay because I've been rubbish and not painting enough. But I'm in good and I'm painting so the tide line I can see over there is that colour hence why I'm doing that colour. Okay, because I don't want this to be black black well it's not black because I haven't actually even used black today but I'm just gonna put a little bit of brown um, that I've made up into the mix and I'm just gonna highlight the edge of the arches um, and the arches are here one two three so you know where they are I'm gonna put a few tones also into um, the harbour wall yeah, just to take a bit of a take a bit of that darkness out I'll put some down stripes and stuff here you go just to soften that put some in the top as well and I'm going to put some on the old lighthouse along there and this is just like I said because it dries whoops so much darker I'm um, just giving that a little bit of attention steps come down there and there's a little bit there and you've got the downs there's ladders and various bits and pieces that come down there's a few steps that come down to the side as well okay and I'm going to put a little bit of this onto the top as well because I um it gives a bit of variety to have tone it's not all the same it's not the same tone all the way through Lift up a little bit of that. Nice. There you go. Okay. So I'm just going to put a different colour here, really. So I'm going to use a bit of mauve. Um, not set up very well for this today. I'm, I've got a kind of kneel on a chair here, and um, it's a wee bit uncomfortable, should we say? Okay. So. I'm going to use some of this in some of the buildings. And like I said, these are like just to help people. You know, we know their buildings. And I want it to stay looking nice and painterly rather than um, too faffy. But need a little bit of definition in some places that was a big one white the balconies along here and when people stay there they're like oh this is where I sat drunk my wine was looking at the harbour boats beautiful when it's nice weather perfect even if it's not nice weather it doesn't really matter so we're going to put some window frames in um, all that sort of shenanigans there um, hint at some bits going on there down there do, do, do. Okay, so where we've got our um, 
make sure we're still recording we are where we've got our um buildings over here in the background i'm just going to do some white bits and where i said that um white white tends to be um man-made items uh you know there are these these prominent buildings so the key house being one of them which is like a really famous house on the harbour um, it's literally right on the beach um, is here so I'm gonna just white in the key house there um, it kind of can't really be mistaken um, quite a unique building there that overlooks there it's got a little side bit in it um, this little building here next to the little chapel the harbour master's office there and that's got a little window in it okay so just a few little bits like that just fill in a few little blanks okay and we've got the three cottages down here that are literally on the sand more or less, especially when you get a big tide, they're right on the sand. Okay, so they're there, like that. And then they've got that big side wall to them. And they have a bit of chimney up there. Chim chimney! And then, um, obviously, the flats that are looming over the top building so um, I'm sure views are worth it hey hey don't know what they were thinking but they let that go up there we are all these years ago I remember those being put up um, shows how old I am flat reef on the top Anyway, that's going to do for that because I don't think that's like the prettiest building in the world. I don't want to make too much of a big thing of it. But it's there. Okay. And we've got a few white bits here. Again, like I said, I still want to keep it quite painty. I don't want it to be too faffy. Now, this is where I run into trouble because Karen faffs. I do, I'm outy, but you know. okay so now i'm going to put some sort of like little bits in these so these are little small marks that indicate that sort of like people people doing stuff you know little marks it's a bit of activity going on there because there's always people walking along there there you go that'll do for that marvelous okay a few little i don't know what these are don't know what little bits there was birds to be fair down there there's a little white boat there on the harbour so i'm just going to put the white bits on the pier now oh actually before i do that don't let me forget the little bits that are through the arches so through the arches we can see the sky behind and we can see it through all three of these part way to here okay So this is what we've got to there we go okay um, because like I said there's always stuff going on up here on there 
you get like the sides of the cars like their windscreens get in the sunshine so that's like windscreens of all the parked cars there they are good job some little marks down here so I think it's important to vary your marks you have big strokes and little strokes it adds to a little bit of variety going on you don't want it to look all the samey samey it makes it boring I think to look at so I think it's good to have that bit of variety there let's have a little look I've got a few bits that come down here like that there's nothing really uniform. Um, a bit like that. There we go. So you've got a nice pale colour over there. Gosh, I don't know whether um, there we go. Um, Right, so we're down as far as the lighthouse and we've got a bit of a change in direction of things. And I want to just put, um, get rid of a little bit of red on that. It's a little bit too ready for me. A little bit is fine. A little bit of stuff going on. Okay. Lost one of my shoes. Where did that go? Over there. And I was kneeling on there. Okay. So all the way down the pier here, there's things, <laughs> stuff going on. There's always stuff going on on the harbour. So if I want to now, I can get rid of a little bit more of this um, red in the sky. Do I want to? No, 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 not too much. And I can also trim down the headland a little bit over there so it goes up a bit more gradually. I'll bring that just into the, the roof there the hills okay that's looking quite good I can't, I'm quite happy with that so far okay let's have a little bit more of this and bring that a little bit into up here can you get some free life music from next next door at the same time as watching my paintings. Right. Okay, so right over in the very, very, very distance, probably too distant to even really notice, but I know it's there, so I'm going to do it, is a really thin strip of sand. So, I'm going to put it in. So this is over by Hale Estuary. There we go. Now you can't see the beach at Carvers Bay and it doesn't go far enough up to see Port Minster Beach either. But I can see that over there so that is going in. Oh yeah. Okay so because I've put that over there I'm also going to add a few bits of that colour into there too because you know this is where we've got a bit of stuff going on shouting at my dog. Is that my barking? Probably at the chickens. Because she likes them. She's doing her collie herding of birds. Grab some 
she barks too much I'm gonna have to go and get her in a minute Yeah, I'm just adding a little bit of this colour into here. Because it's occurring elsewhere. I do like to make it run through the painting. And I'm just going to put a few bits so Right, so I quite like that, like that, that's good, happy with it, happy with it. Um, let's have a look at this water a little bit before I run out of battery or memory or whatever it is on the phone. Right, stop faffing with that a minute. So just want to have a look at this and then we'll uh, see if we need to add any more boats or anything let's have a little look at the water so with my water here I'm going to just put some strips of extra along here because I just want that to be a little bit denser there. I just want that colour saturation to be a little bit stronger on the top there. Not so much. It's really light there with the reflection of the clouds. So I want that to show up to a point. Okay, across there and across there. So this is a beautiful colour. Um, and also along here because it's I can see lots of red here and I don't want quite so much red showing so I'm just gonna slightly haze the bottom of the pier just to slightly soften that line there we go and I'm gonna dry brush a little bit of the red out of there just a little bit Same with that. I've added a little bit more colour into this bit, just a little bit. There, looks nice. That gives it a nice, almost gleam across there. And this curve, I want it to curve like this. So I'm just going to have to go and get my collie around because she's making too much fuss. Right, Collie is in in the building. I know you have a lovely voice, Laws, but let's not. Come on, off there, off of there. Good girl. Just not everyone thinks it's as lovely as as me. So this is kind of the reflection. It's coming down from the sky into the water here and again I don't want to faff too much but I do just want to make a few little 
marks here from it so it's still quite painty and it comes down here like this Really nice sweep to this. It comes round like that down to here. And some of these bits here I've got some highlights on them. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we have that and now what we're going to add is, um, let's have a little look. Right, we're still going. So we want to put a bit of water on there. So we've got a nice little bit of like um, breaky water there, like that, just to the point there. And it's coming in there. It's got a little edge to it, little edge, then comes up and around like this. Like this, and this just goes up into, it's like the very shoreline bit. So it's all going that one direction. And it's, it's greeny, but it's also quite sandy down here. So it's almost like um, umbery, umbery. Yeah. So let's put a bit more umber into that mix. Should you getting all the sand mixed up in that? There we go nice okay so this continues like up here where we've got a bit of breaking water and I'm trying to do it with this bigger brush so that I'm like I said not being overly faffy I know I talk those. I'm always talking. Can't help it. It's kind of just what I do. Right, so this brush is going to be a bit too big to do... Um, my water a little bit further up so I'm gonna to have to go to a smaller brush now which is faffy zone okay so along here there's a little bit of white water which comes from there all the way along here okay along there like that and then it goes up a little bit and then we have kind of going up and doing its little watery splashy thing it's quite sure it's, it's um, really gentle way so it's only breaking on the shoreline there's not um, anything further out so Ends up there, there's a little pew, pew, pew. without doesn't make like that noise, but there's a little bit of um, break there.
Now this one here is up, it's not breaking, it's still up in the air here. So this is along the top, so it's just about to break, but it's not broken yet. So we only get the white water along the top here. And then this is coming over here, like that. It's like curled up there. Okay, so we hopefully we're still going um, on the camera. I can kind of watch it now because it starts cutting itself out randomly. I think I'm filling up the card. Okay, so we've got some break stuff there. I don't want to make it too faffy still want to keep it quite nice and painty right so so those going up there like that that's like little um almost veins where it breaks and then goes up and crisscrosses and stuff. And um, what works quite nicely sometimes is when you do a bit of splattering on it, which I will do in a minute. I might have to re-highlight just the edges of these, just to, with a bit of titanium white to um, just make it so it's um, just a little bit sharper on the edge. Um, like I'm say, saying earlier on, it doesn't really occur in nature. You, sometimes you just need to give it a bit of a hand. And I just want it to be slightly more clarified down here, really. Okay, so anyway, let's leave that like that for now. I'm going to put in some boats for you guys so that you can see some boats in there. So we'll put all the little distant ones in the first. So I get a dark mixture and I go like that there's just irritating me. If it goes in too much. There we go, that's fine. Why it bugged me so much, I have no idea anyway. So, boats, okay, where do they start? My boats start about here. So, I'm going to put in just some little bits of boaty stuff. Doesn't matter what I'm doing so much shape wise yet, because I'm going to add that afterwards. But I'm just going to highlight where the boats are. Straight there. Okay. It's a big one here. Stick it on its own a little bit. It's quite a few there. Quite a few boats down there actually. I didn't realise how many there was. So this is like brand new shiny reference, literally, like I said just the other day. So all very current, how it was literally yesterday. So I like to just start off with the darker colours and um, get all the other ones going on. Okay, so a few masts. And again, this is your eyes, and now making these into boats. They're just 
it's like everything with painting so shapes and then you make the rest out now what I liked about this is there was a gig here and the gig is um, just sit on its own there so we're gonna pop her in she goes like that she's quite long and sleek up to about there and that's where her stern is and this one is the port minster which is one of the gigs that they race um, there's quite a few of them around now in different spots but they're nice long slender boats gig rowing is great fun I do remember on one of my keep fit binges, gosh, many years ago, must be 25 years ago, um, training with the gig team over the winter at the uh, sports hall. They train hard, these guys, and it's, uh, it's hard work, it's gig rowing. Right, so that's the outline of our St. Ives gig, Port Minster, and she's a beautiful colour turquoise. So we shall paint her turquoise as she is. But it's hard work. It's a hard work for me now. I didn't have any thing like the stamina needed to go gig rowing anymore. She is. So she's casting her colour into the water underneath of her. I think what time of the day this was yesterday. It's been around about lunchtime. Maybe just after lunchtime, because um, the light was directly above, so there was not a huge amount of light cast uh, shade shadow, even shade shadow. But she's pretty much a focal point in the uh, painting. Okay, so she is there, and then she has white, you can see, because the inside of her is painted white. So we'll add that to her. And that comes from about there. You can start to see the white. I wish I'd got the glasses on. I can't see anything. Okay, she's got a couple of seagulls sitting on her there. That must be a perfect spot for the birds, bobbing around, uninterrupted, until they see a pasty that they have to go and swipe. Bless them. Oops, 
it's just a reflection there of that it's also a little boy as in a floating ball and behind Bobby like I said two little seagulls I'm going to put those in I quite like those right. this one most people won't even notice these but if you watch me doing this you'll be in the know okay so she called the fourth minster i have not brush or glasses that enable me to write that but what we do is we just like do a little bit of token stuff there a bit of white that looks like it might say something there we go there she is floating on the water so the things in the background now because obviously i've gone a bit wild and painted all the boats dark we need to lighten a few of those up um in the background um just to give a bit of definition to the fact they're actually boats um so i'm gonna start with these ones here so we'll give a little bit of stuff to those that was looks like I had a little strange thing going on there kneel on this and then go over there to get my paint it's not the best setup in the world to be fair And because I want our Port Minster there um, gig to be mainly a focal point, I'm not going to go OTT with these boats in the background or give them a huge amount of colour because um, I think that will take away from her really a little bit. So um, these will be kind of quite low key in the background. Just little, uh, like I said, little marks that your eye will make into, into fishing boats etc. Um, there we go. too bad does it need to work on the sand a little bit and i feel like i need to work on the sky a little bit more as well so i just kind of want that sky a little bit more subtle um, so to do that what i'm going to do is mix up like a palish gray um he thinks laddie and um mess around with that a little just for a second so let me use a bit of this mixed with quite a bit of white. I'm trying to avoid getting any green in it, that's my trouble. I need a little bit of, so I want it to be like a grey but a really cool pale grey. So let's get some more white in there. I'm going to take a little bit of that in there, like a load of white in it. Because I don't know, it just, there's something about the sky, it's not really, what I'm going to do is make this grey come down here a little bit, so into the houses a little bit more, just because, like, I don't know, I just see a bit too much 
too much red in the sky for my liking, a bit like there was further down in. I can't say I'm the best fan of the colour of that blue. So I'm going to greyfy it just to neutralise it a little bit and then I'm going to, maybe not all of it, maybe just some, and then I'm going to um, add a little bit of blue but really pale. Pale blue. It's like I'm coming across as being blue. Maybe not. So, can you see what I'm doing here? I'm just I'm kind of just neutralizing this a little bit. I'm going to put the clouds back in, but I just wasn't 100% happy with that that blue. It was just, I don't know, a bit too... I don't know. Overall, it just wasn't floating my boat too much. So I'm going to tone it down. And then work it back up a little bit, which might seem a bit bonkers, but I kind of know what I mean. There was something it just wasn't sitting quite, quite right with me with it. There we go. Already, I feel that that looks better. So now I'm going to use, get this blue off because this will carry, I'm going to use my white and then work back into it again. Well I've just realised I haven't even done the main lighthouse on the end yet. So now I'm just working this sky line down into the pier a bit. Again, take a little bit of red out of it. It's still there, but it's not. Um, and any of the pier furniture that um, I've been a bit over the top with, I can kind of slow it. Um, I can kind of lessen it and make it a little bit more subtle. Because. Um, it's quite easy to overdo stuff like that. Oh, that's much better. That just like, yeah, that's what I wanted. That's better. You have to just let it sit sometimes for a little while and always reassess and look at it again. That's nice. That's better. Right, let's have a little look at this picture in a minute. So the edges up here of the clouds are quite harsh, but then they blend in down into the ground. So as they come down, they're fading out into you. See, oh, that's so much better. I'll show you the picture. When I finish doing this, I just have to go with it a minute while it's while it's going well. That's like really nice. Sorry, it's a bit of a you know, sometimes it just 
works. That's it. Much better. Yes, that's the one. That makes it so much better. Nice. Okay. Oh yeah, that's much better. Much better. Little bit of that shines on there. A little bit of that goes across here. Like I said, the um, the light was right ahead, so you don't really get much shadow on this. Um, you just get a little bit of uh, get a, I need to make that light bit of the water there, though that water line there, where the wet sand is, a bit more prevalent because that's blended in a bit much, so. Again, this bit, this is where the current tide line is. Yes, that's much better. Nice, I like that. Happy, 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 happy. Right, so. Let's do some spray on this. Um, like I said, so longer brush. Uh, did it this way around. Normally I'd move the, the painting, but obviously I can't do that here at the moment for this. Um, not too fussed about the up there stuff at the moment. But so stuff that's up here in the sky, <laughs> I'm going to get rid of. I don't want it to be that far up okay but quite like that that makes it quite nice and then I'm going to for the very white edges like stipple it there a little bit more in fact I do need that full-on titanium white for that because I need that to be really white I don't know if I'm going to get it with this mixing light. Uh, let's have a look, see if I can find one. Excuse me, sweetheart. Good girl. Dogs always lying by my feet. Uh, now, where's my titanium white when I want it? Darn. Darn blast. Oh, that's fine. Right, so this is just this much stronger. Um, I'm going to use a finer brush for it. Eh? Where's that little skinny brush gone? There it is. Okay. Are we still recording? We are. Okay. So there's a couple of little boys out here floating. So I'll put those in a minute. One, two. Um, make it actually round might help. Okay, so they also have um, some of the boats have them. Don't they? So the titanium white here now, 
which is a stronger white so I can use that for extra bits that I really want to highlight um oh it's actually filling the pier probably I could probably get away with not but That's all we need to do there. Um, I'll do a few little highlights along here. Just make a few bits a little bit stronger. Can you see the difference for the titanium white against the zinc white? Zinc is made as a mix in white, so um, there will be a, a difference. Okay, right, so just to put some highlights on the water here, where with the titanium white, you can see here that difference. And it kind of stays that white. It doesn't go, doesn't soak back. Just for where you do need that sparky white stuff. That's where it comes into its own. Um, here it's just getting drawn up. <clears throat> so this is the last little bit. So we just go and put the edge of the um, the water strange noise in the background is because the dogs are just being fed up here with me so that's them eating not me <laughs> as hungry as I may be my table manners a little bit better Okay, so this is like just some twiddly D bits that I'm doing on the end of this now. Um, I think I want to put a little bit more detail into this bit of the sand here. I don't really want to do a huge amount there, but um, I could do with maybe, maybe putting a few people just up here. Let's get a few little people. Um, and again, um, and you need to indicate they don't need to be like mahusif um 
you know, bits and pieces. So this is just a little bit of uh, seaweed and stuff that gets uh, washed up on the shore. Um, right, let's have a little look at this a minute and just put a little bit more. I'm going to mix some white, some of the zinc mix some white with the buff titanium. Oops, we've lost our light for some reason. Gum. Oops, just had enough. Oh, have a little look. Let's see, probably just sinks that I've. Uh, Anyway, we haven't got a huge amount more to do, so let's just have a little look. It just means you'll have a little bit of shadow, sorry about that. So I'm just going to put a little bit. Of light onto this. Just to give it a little bit of variety because I don't want it to be too flat. Put a little bit of that colour through there as well. So like I said, it's got we're gonna have a little bit of colour in our people because and I like to just put a little bit of colour into just a few of the little background boats, only a little bit. Doesn't have to be anything too dramatic. A little bit up there. Can't really even see that, to be fair. It's like, it can be subtle, it's fine. But where there's stuff going on, you know, people and things, we normally come with a bit of colour. Ships sometimes have some colour. Again, that red will just take your eye into it. Um, some of these little boys out here floating, it's got a little bit of colour in them. So, again, they could have a little bit of colour. That one behind Port Minsters, not a white one, it's a bit of an old one, though. it's quite faded. But again, it just takes your eye into slightly different places. And I will sign my name. Let's make my name orange if I can. I'll do that down here. Oh, rubbish. Yeah, that's a bit crap actually. Um, let's do that. Let's change that. We're not going to have an orange name, we're going to go black. We're going to go Payne's Grey. There we go, my dears. Um, Maybe have a few little more bits of seaweed, just done a little bit darker. It's 
So I have a little bit more definition there. Again, um, little bits there there wasn't actually anyone down here on the shoreline so no, I don't think I'm gonna actually gonna put anyone in it sometimes I'll have a person there but I don't think I actually want anyone in that I think that is grand job like that without anyone I don't think that's too too bad. Just a little bit piece of the boat. And maybe a few little That's pretty good on the grand scale of it. I think I'm quite happy with that. Jolly good. So I hope you enjoyed this and it's been informative. I can work out how to let people leave comments, then I will do. But it would be really nice to know whether um, at all this is uh, this is useful or enjoyable to watch. Hopefully both. Um, that would be uh, quite nice to find out. I'm just going to put some downward lines onto the, the wet sand so you, that you can see that that's uh, that's where that one's coming from. There we go. And um, if you would like to like and subscribe to my channel that would be marvelous it's quite a new channel and um, means that I might actually get my finger out and do a bit more do a bit more work and um, my name's Karen Gilmore and this is Petrol and Paint hope to see you all soon thank you for watching <laughs>